Hi, my name's Ron Agner. I was awakened uh, all the way back in 1993 when I, my house was, uh, uh, can I say that I had Jefferson County deputies come upon my property and violate my Fourth Amendment. When I asked them to uh, leave my house, uh, instead of uh, following the law, they assaulted me and beat me for eight minutes. So I had had a heads up before the Columbine tragedy. And when I learned of the Columbine tragedy, I knew who the bullies were already. So I have uh, been on this quest since Columbine to uh, uh, expose the um, reason for the Columbine tragedy. And it happens to be a lot worse than I had expected. I assumed that the two boys during their arrest, the, the two killers, uh, had been uh, abused by cops. But we had no idea that they had been raped by cops until we found a picture that Eric Harris drew, which led us to believe that, and we have so much um, uh, information that it will boggle your mind. We're, we've got very strong circumstantial evidence, including uh, testimony from attorney John DeCamp that the uh, two shooters had been sexually molested by police officers. And during our investigation, uh, we also learned that the two shooters were put on psychotropic drugs, and they were actually using these drugs as a way to build up the courage to uh, attack the school. We found a written motive where the shooter, Harris, gets a uh, letter from uh, Dylan Klebold in his uh, yearbook, and it stated that they would be blowing up things on an April morning, and they were going to be killing cops. That's the motive. And they went on to say that it was going to be because they were getting even for this January incident. And the January incident, uh, you simply Google January incident, you can understand that it was the arrest of the two boys when they broke into a van. Uh, we have John DeCamp who has gotten information from another source. He was able to go into the secret files that have been sealed, plus the basement tapes that the two killers made. And he says that those files indicate that the boys were raped multiple times besides this January incident. So as you see, we have very strong information. And our information goes political because we had gone to many people asking for this information to be investigated, including the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. And also it uh, presently enters the White House in the name of Ken Salazar, who's the Interior Secretary, he was the Attorney General at the time, and uh, we have him pegged as being a Columbine cover-up uh, conspirator along with Bill Ritter. In this case, uh, we, we can prove that, that he knew that the uh, tragedy was due to the boys being raped. So he, he like uh, Bill Clinton, are the Joe Paternos of the Columbine tragedy. Columbine tragedy would be much worse because we have dead children and injured children, not just raped children. And in this case, uh, it's like Penn State on steroids. Do you understand that these people do not care for our children, that they prefer to cover up for their own horrible institutions? This is institutional protected rape. And we've been to just about every office. When I'm saying me, I'm talking about Columbine families, Mark Taylor and Donna Taylor. And I've been with them during this entire episode where she's the one that brings me to these people because many of these politicians have wanted to uh, use their tragedy for their own purposes and we've simply taken those opportunities to share with them what we've learned. Uh, this goes my experience. I was uh, uh, harassed and uh, obstructed, uh, mostly white collar abuse uh, when I tried to uh, build a bed and breakfast and had to force, I was forced out of Jefferson County, uh, could no longer work there because of the harassments. And I moved to a little restaurant called the Coney Island Hot Dog. And I rebuilt that in Park County. Before I even got that built, I was involved in another school shooting in which a little girl that I knew named Emily Keyes was killed in a crossfire between a man who came into the school and started raping children. The official story was that he was just a random camper, but we know him as a angry parent, and we have the proof that he was an angry parent. And we also have the kids that worked for me. 
uh, who came to me and told me that the school resource officer, Jeff Wood, was getting girls pregnant, and that's true. And so in this case, we have all the pieces that they didn't want to share with us. That uh, Here again, we have another school shooting, a deadly school shooting, in which the school is protecting and also the uh, uh, law enforcement is protecting a sexual predator who provoked uh, uh, what we understand to be a estranged father into taking the law into his own hands. It's, it's quite horrible that we have um, a government that doesn't seem to have their priorities correct. Uh, we're trying to protect kids from rapists, and we're yelling rape, and we've been yelling rape, and we have nobody. Can I say we've been to some high places, not just Clinton. We've been to Tancredo. We've been to Lamborn. We've been to, presently, uh, Mike oh. Kaufman's office. Um, we've been everywhere. We've been to all. Uh, what you need to know is the FBI and the um, Secret Service were at Columbine to do profiles of the killers. How come they couldn't see clearly that they, the boys had written a written motive that they planned to blow up the school because of the January incident? Uh, to underline the word wrath, Harris, excuse me, Dylan Klebold wore the word wrath on his t-shirt as he was attacking the school. The word wrath is quite clear in his written motive. So I, these are just the fine points and we have so much more on our website, columbinefamilyrequest.org. I, um, I hope that some of these little pieces start kind of making sense to you because it, it's not as easy as watching a building blow up and see one corner going down the same time as the other corner. This is taking a little bit more time out of your day to do the research, but we have the research up on the internet, and we also have some very strong advocates at this point. Um, we intend to um, call for an investigation, and if we don't have our demands met, uh, we have a, can I say, a standing army that's willing to stand, step up and see to it that our demands are met. Uh, might check out the Pete Santilli show because he's the man that's organizing this. Also, we have the, uh, a number of other organizations, uh, especially Lawless America, that's taking time to uh, hear our story. And um, we would just like to thank the people that are uh, giving us finally the opportunity to share this horrible truth. You need to know that the truth will protect the lives of children because the lie that they um, put upon Columbine that it was two angry boys because of school bullying is causing children to kill children. We had an episode uh, three days before the Columbine tra uh, the uh, anniversary this year. 13-year-old boy went into his middle school, Isaac Newton Middle School, right across the street from where we buried the, fount the children of Columbine. And his intent was to put a bomb underneath the jocks table and blow the cafeteria up. So you understand once you learn that this was not about school bullying, it was about police pedophilia, that uh, the kids have been misdirected into, you know, it creates a tremendous fan base when, when they uh, talk about these two boys being angry at classmates. And I've been on the internet enough to know that some of these disenfranchised kids really think that these two boys at Columbine are gods. So we need to separate this uh, truth, even though it's a horrible truth, we have to separate that out and let the kids know that it wasn't about them, it was about police behavior. And I thank you for the time. Uh, when it comes to the um, Platte Canyon shooting, um, you can uh, do your own, we don't have a website up for that, but uh, all of the documentation that I have is still live links and you can do your own research and learn uh, that the uh, first reports out of that school that was a parent and they they've passed it off as being a random camper that's not the truth we know that the school resource officer was getting girls pregnant and uh, it goes into child trafficking where we also learned that in Jefferson County this is where Columbine happened they were since 1994 they have been tra trafficking children. Uh, we learned this through a lady named Judy Chase, and Judy uh, had her husband murdered satanically. Was her, his body was found in Bear Creek 45 days after he disappeared, 
and they learned the name of the child trafficking operation. They called themselves the Fat Cats, and the Fat Cats uh, murdered her husband satanically. It ties to the Columbine and to the John Benny Ramsey case because they leave calling cards. In the Columbine case, Donna Taylor, they had left dead fish carcasses in her yard. In the Judy Chase case, they left animal carcasses in her yard. In the John Benet Ramsey case, they left animal carcasses in the yard. And we also have a very interesting uh, part of the written um, ransom note. And in this case, uh, they've become quite comfortable writing this letter, talking to John as if they, he knows them. Because he says, hey, John, this is John Ramsey, you're not the only fat cat around. You know who we are, and you know what we're capable of. So in this case, we truly believe that maybe if a little bit more research was done and we found simply the DNA of the child, we would like to see whether the DNA of uh, John Benny Ramsey matches the Ramsey family. We haven't found that yet. Uh, goes on to... Uh, uh, we also learned about child trafficking uh, in an airplane crash to Butte, Montana. We were simply looking closely at it because the rapist of the Columbine tragedy, who was in a picture that Harris drew, named uh, the name of the pic drawing is Walsh but rape text. That's in a um, El Paso County file labeled. And in this case, that picture indicates that Walsh was the arresting officer who raped Eric Harris. So we discovered there was a Tim Walsh in Butte, Montana who had a father named John Walsh who was a sheriff. And in this case we discovered there was an airplane crash in which 13 beautiful children were aboard and they were uh, identified by a witness as being uh, approximately 12, <coughs> 6 to 10 years old, very cute. And uh, FAA reports earlier on that it was 17 people aboard. Suddenly, it becomes the owners of the airplane's uh, immediate family, owner of the airplane being the owner of the largest abortion clinic chain in the state of Colorado, or excuse me, the state of California. And the children were on their way to the Yellowstone Club, which is a ski area for the elites. So um, we've identified this as being a child trafficking operation where the plane crashed with 17 aboard, not 14. Uh, an indication that it wasn't the uh, families of the, that they claim is the eyewitness said it was six to ten years old and the children of one family are one to four. So some of these, as a, you know, we don't have the capability to do a total investigation, but in that case we could find the DNA of the victims of that crash. In that case, Hillary Clinton, her website uh, Hillary's Village comes up during that tragedy and all the people on that website are indicating that these people are friends of Hillary's. So it lets you know who her friends are. I guess that uh, covers most of it. I could go on for days. <laughs> Satanic Luciferian America is lawless America is the way we see it. Anybody that treats children like this don't have any right being governing us. They have shown us from the beginning they have no love for our children that they protect themselves, and that's how we have to live, knowing our children are in danger from the government that we pay to protect them. I want my country back. <laughs>